Welcome, and thank you for joining us for the 2021 STEM Education Day at the Capitol. I'm Stephanie Frazier, and I serve as the Vice President of Education for South Carolina ETB. I am delighted to be hosting this program that has been put together by the South Carolina Coalition for Mathematics and Science. Joining us virtually uh, and in person here today, we have 20 schools from around the state who will be recognized for their accomplishments in STEM. We also have the finalist for the 2021 STEM Educator of the Year. And we also have a number of other honored guests who you'll get to hear from in the next hour. We have a jam-packed agenda, so I'm going to go ahead and jump in. Our first presenter, or who you'll hear from, is Dr. Tom Peters, who is the Executive Director of the South Carolina Coalition for Mathematics and Science. The coalition was founded in 2004 by BMW Manufacturing, DuPont, Michelin North America, and Duke Energy. They were hosted by the College of Engineering, Computing, and Applied Science at Clemson University. Let's hear from Dr. Peters now. Hello and welcome. I'm Tom Peters. I'm the Executive Director of South Carolina's Coalition for Mathematics and Science. And this is our fourth annual STEM Education Day at the State Capitol. We're here today to celebrate a very big idea and some very special people. The big idea is STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics education. It's a focus that drives South Carolina's economy and the nation's as well. It's a focus that makes possible advances in manufacturing, in materials, in automotive, in aerospace, agribusiness, and bioscience. Achievements in these fields are impossible without the dynamic and compassionate educators in our public and private schools and in out-of-school learning places. Today, we honor STEM educators everywhere across the state of South Carolina. Thank you for being here and welcome. Good morning, my name is Representative Celeste Davis. And back in 2017, shortly after I came into office, I contacted Tom Peters. I had an idea that we needed to celebrate STEM Education Day in the state of South Carolina. So in 2018, we had our first STEM Education Day. In 2019, we had our first STEM Education Week. And so the year after, we had our first STEM Education Month. It has grown and it has grown uh, despite the pandemic and the challenges that we've seen as a result of that. South Carolina is growing. We're growing rapidly. And with that growth, we're seeing an increase in jobs and an increase in interest in manufacturing and other businesses coming into the state of South Carolina. And the number one thing that those employers want more than anything is a well-educated workforce and specifically a STEM educated workforce. So with those increases in STEM jobs, we're gonna have an increase in STEM education. I am proud of our South Carolina students, parents, teachers, and I look forward to all the great things that we're gonna see our students accomplish in the coming years. Thank you. Well, welcome to STEM Education Day at the Capitol. It really is a noteworthy notion of what has been expressed by Representative Davis and Dr. Tom Peters, and that is that this is, this is where our future lies. It's, uh, we call it brain power, where you call it sophisticated technologies, insights, education. It is all based, has to be based on STEM education. And I believe that we are on the cusp of great growth and progress and prosperity in our state for a variety of reasons. And the main one of which is our people. I have, we all have great confidence in our people and we know what they can do when they're given the tools to do things. So STEM Education Day is a great reminder to all of us about what our accomplishments have been, what we can do, 
and the future a great careers, prosperity, and happiness for our people. And I believe that we can be a leader in the country in this area as well as others. So it is my honor to issue this proclamation, the State of South Carolina Governor's Proclamation, whereas science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, STEM, are recognized as world-class knowledge to be mastered by all graduates of South Carolina schools. And whereas opportunities in STEM career fields, such as advanced manufacturing, advanced materials, aerospace, automotive, information technologies, and life sciences continue to grow in the Palmetto State. And why, whereas STEM learning in schools and after school programs and in a wide variety of formal and informal learning settings all contribute to increased STEM knowledge and skills and whereas partnerships between education, industry, and community are key to supporting, supporting, promoting, and improving STEM education in South Carolina, and whereas STEM learning is enhanced by dedicated and well-prepared teachers, mentors, and volunteers, and whereas the Palmetto State is committed to providing its next generation of leaders with a rigorous, well-rounded education. And whereas it is important to recognize and promote student and teacher accomplishments in STEM. Now, therefore, I, Henry McMaster, governor of the great state of South Carolina, do hereby proclaim March 17, 2021, as STEM Education Day throughout the state and encourage all South Carolinians to join me in recognizing the positive impact of STEM education on the quality of life of the residents of the Palmetto State. Signed by me, Henry McMaster, the proud, happy governor of 5.2 million proud, happy South Carolinians. Dr. Peters, if you will, give that to you. All right. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I must leave. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Governor. Thank you very much. Next. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, so thank you so much, Governor, and thank you for those comments, Representative Davis and Dr. Peters. Our next speaker is Lieutenant Colonel Brandon A. McLean. He is the commander of the 337th Recruiting Squadron at Shaw Air Force Base in South Carolina. As commander, he plans, organizes, leads, and controls the recruiting activities of seven enlisted accession flights with approximately 86 active duty and nine civilian personnel. The areas of responsibility for this squadron cover a 64,000 square mile region in North Carolina and South Carolina. Their mission is to inspire, engage and recruit the next generation of airmen for service in America's Air Force. Let's welcome Colonel Knapp. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for having me. Uh, I was given the opportunity to come and speak uh, in support of the coalition and I just really appreciate what, uh, what the coalition is doing. I have a background in STEM myself and I think it's really significant the efforts that are being made in South Carolina to engage in uh, science and technology engineering. Um, it's such a significant thing and I so appreciate the teachers and educators who are participating in that. The Air Force really appreciates that because we need leaders in these areas who can go forward and do great things uh, to sustain freedom for the world through the United States military. And so um, just, as we are supporting this and as we have this opportunity to be a part of this, uh, we're just really encouraged to see the efforts that are being made in South Carolina. I'm really encouraged to be able to be here to represent the Air Force and to represent uh, STEM education from the Air Force's point of view and what you do every day. So thank you so much and uh, thanks, for, thanks for your support. Thank you again uh, for those comments. Our next speaker is Ms. Morgan Nichols. And Morgan is the Corporate Affairs and Investor Relations Manager of SC Bio, where she manages existing and future relationships with SC Bio's various life sciences stakeholders. 
She also helps to spearhead SC Bio's life sciences workforce initiatives and digital content and programming. Morgan is a summa cum laude graduate of Clemson University with a degree in genetics and a minor in business administration. She is also Miss South Carolina, where she travels across the state promoting her initiative of Stronger with STEM, developing a 21st century STEM workforce by furthering the connection between academia and industry. She inspires students into the field and instills professional development. Let's welcome Ms. Morgan now. Thank you so much for that awesome introduction and a big thank you to the coalition for putting on such a wonderful event here today. And so my name is Morgan Nichols and as you can see, I wear a few different hats and I come to you with a few different hats today. One of those being a student, um, a product of the STEM education here in South Carolina. Um, I also come to you as a professional, as corporate affairs manager and investor relations of SC Bio, which is the Life Sciences Industry Association here in South Carolina and an advocate for STEM education in my years as Miss South Carolina, furthering my initiative of Stronger with STEM here in South Carolina. But while I wear many different Different hats, I definitely have one true passion, and that's this marvel of the 21st century that we call science, technology, engineering, and math, STEM education. And in the past year and a half, we have truly never seen more importance of pouring into the next generation of scientists, of engineers, of pharmacists than we do right here amid this pandemic. And as a representative of the life sciences industry that's com com comprised of pharmaceutical, medical devices, diagnostics companies. I stand before you today amplifying the voices of the South Carolina life sciences industry who is ferociously battling COVID-19 as we speak and they're needing a trained and skilled employees to really aid them in this battle and the next one to come. But they don't just need skilled and trained employees. They need a diverse workforce as well. And I think that word diversity, it can be seen as a buzzword, but it is immensely important in this STEM world. And I'll give you an example. So we've all been tuning into the COVID-19 vaccine updates, right? Probably just as much as we tune in to South Carolina football. And whether it be Pfizer, Moderna, or Johnson & Johnson, hundreds of the brightest minds in STEM are coming together to innovate and ultimately create a better tomorrow. And that word innovate is a big word in the STEM world. And innovation is key for unlocking a better tomorrow, but it doesn't happen when everyone thinks the same way. We must come together with a diversity of minds, the diversity of backgrounds, and the diversity of thought to ultimately innovate to foster the STEM workforce of tomorrow. But I will say that we do face a crisis. And by the year 2030, up to a third of the American workforce will be obsolete because their skill sets won't match STEM demands, and they'll be unemployable, effectively left behind. And so this year's theme, See Me in STEM, is all about populating the workforce of tomorrow, all ethnicities, all socioeconomic classes, and all ages. And I think everyone here today shares a common mission to make every make sure everyone in South Carolina, whether it be the upstate, the low country, all finds their place in one of the most exciting chapters in history. And as a young female in science, people told me that I can go into science, but until I saw and interned at Nephron Pharmaceuticals and saw their CEO, Lou Kennedy, and saw females actually be in science and make an impact, I believe that I could go into science. Seeing people in STEM that look like you, act like you, helps motivate you to create a better workforce of tomorrow. And so the real journey, the one that will engage a nation requires bold steps, footprints that align with the vision of cultivating diversity, advancement and innovation in STEM. And so we, we've seen that AI, robotics, automation, the future really is now. And together we can ensure that all South Carolinians truly do see themselves in STEM. So again, join me as we create a, a, a culture of diversity, of innovation, and allow all South Carolinians to see themselves in STEM. Thank you all so much for having me, and I look forward to the rest of today's event.
Thank you so much, Morgan. And just a shameless plug before we move forward, uh, Morgan taped a session of Carolina Classroom. So if you are so inclined, please tune in next Thursday for a conversation about women um, in underrepresented fields. So our next presenter is Ms. Latia Gary. Latia holds a Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering and an MBA. She has worked for the past 20 years in engineering, construction, and manufacturing in either an engineering or a management role. She currently runs a consulting firm, LG Solutions LLC, where she assists businesses in improving their customer base perception and their competitive advantage through such methods as auditing and lean and six sigma process improvement tools. Latia's passion is mentoring young adults, and she currently serves as the state chair for Million Women Mentor SC. Let's welcome Ms. Gary now. Hello and good morning, everyone. Um, Million Women Mentors, the organization is built around mentoring young girls. It's meant to keep and encourage them in STEM fields. As such, we've decided as an organization to always have a young lady in a center of our STEM committee. As such, we've held applications for our student lead position. Throughout the state of South Carolina, we were able to narrow it down to five candidates that we interviewed in person. And I would like to announce to you that our winner of this year's student lead position with Million Women Mentors is Ms. Miranda Sagat. Miranda is a junior at Lexington High School. She is very, um, excuse me, she's very energetic and inquisitive. We enjoyed interviewing her. She challenged us. And as such, I look forward to working with her this coming year. Thank you very much. All right, so hopefully you all are giving uh, lots of cheers and waves uh, of appreciation for uh, that particular student. So our next presenter is Dr. Annette Melton. Dr. Melton is the Senior Director with Cognia, supporting South and North Carolina schools and districts with their improvement initiatives, accreditation, and certification. She holds a Doctor of Philosophy degree in educational leadership, as well as degrees in administration, counseling, and early childhood education. She was an administrator for 16 years, and prior to that served as a school counselor and an early childhood elementary teacher for a total of 34 years in public education. Dr. Melton has extensive experience with continuous improvement and accreditation and has served on numerous engagement reviews across South Carolina and other states. Welcome, Dr. Melton. Good morning, everyone. Again, I'm Annette Melton, Cognia Senior Director. My team and I support South Carolina and North Carolina schools and districts with their accreditation, STEM certification, and improvement initiatives. Cognia is proud to partner with the South Carolina STEM centers to support STEM initiatives across the state. Many of our schools go on to achieve STEM certification, a five-year designation, and several have completed the process for recertification. Attaining Cognia STEM certification means that schools meet rigorous standards in four domains of quality. In summary, STEM community. Certified schools demonstrate that they increase student participation in STEM programs and bring it together stakeholders from the community. STEM learning environment is our second domain. Certified schools encourage learner collaboration and independence in an inquiry-based learning environment. Thirdly, STEM learning experiences. These schools advance interdisciplinary and problem-based curriculum and activities with a focus on real-world applications. Lastly, STEM outcomes. 
these schools demonstrate that learners acquire progressively higher levels of STEM knowledge and skills needed for future success. Today, we acknowledge and recognize the hard work and commitment of 11 schools. The following five schools completed their initial STEM certification in the year 1920 with their recognition delayed due to COVID-19. These schools received the customary Cognia glass globe engraved with their school name and year of initial Cognia STEM certification. We are happy to have them with us today virtually to celebrate. They are Alice Drive Elementary, Sumter County Schools, with Principal Suzanne Foley and Katherine Spigner. We're hoping we're hearing big cheers and excitement from Alice Drive Elementary. Our next school, Bates Middle School, also <laughs> Sumter County Schools. Principal Aisha Hunter and staff member Dana Mitchell, instructional coach. Let's hear it for Bates Middle. Moving on, our third recognition goes to the Christian Academy of Myrtle Beach with Principal Katherine Cannon. We certainly want to give them their time to, to celebrate. Thank you. Fourthly, Richland Two Institute of Innovation, Richland County School District Two, Principal Kevin Albers. Thank you. And then our final initial STEM certified school for 1920, St. Gregory the Great Catholic School, Diocese of Charleston, Principal Chris Trott. <laughs> the next group of schools have continued their commitment to STEM, integrated throughout their schools, and recently completed the Cognia STEM recertification process. They received the Cognia STEM certified banner with their school name and year of recertification this school year. They are Alice Drive Middle School, Sumter School District, Principal Jeannie Presley. Next, we have Dutch Fork High School, School District 5 of Lexington and Richland Counties. Principal Gerald Gary with Barry Lindler. Next, Lower Richland High School, Richland County School District 1. Principal <coughs> Eric. Hi, everybody. Next, Mount Lebanon Elementary School, Anderson School District 4. Principal Elliot Southard. We should be next, but be safe. Next, Pritchardville Elementary School, Beaufort <laughs> County School District. Principal <laughs> Brenda Blue. And our last STEM recertified school, W.J. Keenan High School, Richland Go County School District 1. Principal Vondra Whaley with Kareem Beckett. We thank these schools for their commitment to innovation and excellence through STEM and thank the STEM centers for their unwavering support to improve teaching and learning in South Carolina for all students. Thank you.
Congratulations to all of the schools on their recognition, and we have more recognition to come. Our next presenter is Cheryl Wiggins. Cheryl is the Senior Manager of Community Affairs for Floor's Greenville, South Carolina office, where she is responsible for administering both the Floor Foundation and corporate charitable donation programs. She also oversees Floor's employee volunteer program, Floor Cares. Cheryl also serves on the advisory board for South Carolina's Coalition of Mathematics and Science. And on April 2nd, Cheryl will be retiring from Florida after 43 years. Welcome now. Thank you. The Growing in STEM grants are awarded to schools that submit an innovative curriculum-based project that incorporates multiple aspects of STEM while supporting key life and career characteristics and world-class skills from the profile of South Carolina graduate. As a member of the SCCMS Advisory Board, it is my pleasure to recognize the following four schools and their teacher advisors for their Growing in STEM grant awards. Awardee number one, Colton High School, located in Walterboro, submitted by science teacher Rashonda Bonsley. At Colton High School, chemistry students will be challenged to crap, trap the crap present in the air. Working in small groups, they will design a low cost, efficient air purifier system to remove the air's environmental nanoparticles to ensure health safety by reducing the percentage of bioaerosols in the school's classrooms. The project applies a new pedagogical approach where the teacher partners with learners to engage in learning and creating an active learning environment. Congratulations. Awardee number two, Forest Lake Elementary, located in Columbia, submitted by teacher Marion Scullion. Three, two, one, blast off. Fifth graders at Forest Lake Elementary will research the needs of astronauts and build a lunar habitat a moon base that includes three specific areas, plant growth, physical activity, library, and art appreciation. The habitat will be available for other grades to visit and engage with by creating artwork, completing a physical challenge, and observing plant growth. Congratulations to you. Awardee number three, St. Elizabeth Ann Seton Catholic School, located in Myrtle Beach, submitted by art teacher Meredith Craven. Students at Elizabeth Ann Seton Catholic School will experience Stream Village as part of their National STEM Stream celebration in November. This initiative is designed to connect all disciplines and foster a lifelong love of stream. Students will rotate through 10 cottages in the village to create, discover, and invent. Students will use spin art painting at one cottage to examine atomic layer deposition through torque and rotational motion. The activities at each station are diverse and unique. They have been designed for students to demonstrate creativity, innovation, collaboration, teamwork, critical thinking, and problem solving skills while using information, media, and technology. Congratulations. And awardee number four, St. Joseph Catholic School, located in Anderson, submitted by science and STEM teacher, Aaron Rokenhaus. Butterflies in Stream will engage students at St. Joseph Catholic School in the creation of a conservation habitat for the monarch butterfly and in existing citizen science programs that monitor their population and migration. Its migration is unique among all insect species giving students a fascinating opportunity to relate these, to this species to STEAM, STEM, history, art, and geography. The student learning will create a bridge to building increased community awareness about wildlife conservation in South Carolina. On behalf of SCCMS and the entire board, I'd like to wish all of the winners the best of luck with their new initiatives. We look forward to seeing your progress throughout the coming year. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Wiggins. Our next presenter is Tracy Elmore. Tracy is an educator at Lugolf Elgin Middle School, teaching automation and robotics. 
Energy in the Environment, and Flight and Space. She was named the 2020 SC STEM Educator of the Year, and she believes that educators can inspire a student's interest in STEM careers by helping them envision a brighter future. Uh, she has worked over the past year educating other teachers on how to teach STEM on a budget because all students deserve a quality STEM education. Amen. Ms. Tracy. Hey, thank you for having me today. I would like to thank the SC Competes STEM Educator of the Year, South Carolina Coalition of Math and Science, and STEM Centers of South Carolina for this amazing opportunity and learning experience for selecting me as the 2020 STEM Educator of the Year. I would also like to thank my principal, Jean Cameron, my colleagues in Kershaw County School District for supporting me. I have collaborated with so many inspiring people across our state and nation through this experience and have learned so much from them. I look forward to working with the 2021 STEM Educator of the Year to inspire students and other educators to build a solid STEM foundation in our state. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, educators have had to change the way we interact and engage with our students, being innovative as we find ways to make them successful in school and in life. Teachers are constantly changing and adapting to evolve and reflect on their current times. Now more than ever, Educators are searching to improve their craft to better serve and meet the needs of their students. We share an essential bond of ideals, struggles, and triumphs that unite us in a common purpose. We strive to create the best educational environment for our students by providing them with the leading tools in their education journey, working long after the school day ends. One of my favorite quotes is by Albert Einstein. It is the supreme art of the teacher to awaken joy in creative expression and knowledge. As educators, we touch and inspire our kids' lives every day with joy and creativity, virtually or face-to-face. -face. We do not only teach curriculum-based instruction, but also life skills by engaging students with critical thinking and problem solving. This year, I have been honored to network with many colleagues and to collaborate with online resources that have empowered student learning by providing real world learning experiences in STEM. Learning Blade is one free resource that provides interactive missions that show STEM careers in the context of solving people and community centered problems. Another great resource is the National Inventors Hall of Fame that offers eight programs which connect the world's innovators with the youth of today. These two resources are a game changer for all types of learners and learning interactions that empower students to recognize that STEM will be beneficial in the workforce. It is imperative that we remember that building re relationships with our students is the most vital part of making learning successful for them. Educators, we have the power to inspire our students, enhance their academic potential, set high expectations to build confidence and to help them envision a brighter future to explore unfamiliar career choices. Educators across the country, your work matters. And I thank you for helping to inspire the next generation of STEM professionals in our workforce. Stay strong and believe in yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Elmore, and thank you also for your year of service. To announce the finalists for this year's award, I am pleased to introduce Ms. Susie Shannon. Susie serves as the president and CEO of the South Carolina Council on Competitiveness, a nonpartisan, business-led, nonprofit organization that drives South Carolina's long-term economic growth through managing select industry clusters and providing the research, network, and resources that clusters require to thrive. The initiatives and industry clusters directly managed by the council include SC Aerospace, SC Logistics, SC Tech, Cybersecure SC, Transform SC, and SC Fraunhofer USA Alliance. Let's welcome Ms. Shannon now.
Thank you, Dr. Frazier. And, and thank you to Tracy. What an incredible job you did in leading over this past year. And we know you're gonna do incredible things beyond. So, so thank you so much. And thank you to all of our schools who are logged on remotely and to all of you watching on Facebook's um, SCET, SCETV's live Facebook feed. I'm excited to be in person this morning to recognize the incredible regional finalists for this year's STEM Educator of the Year, who will actually be joining us over Zoom. Over the last year, we have all had to adapt and rely on technology to host and attend everything from classroom lessons to virtual hugs with loved ones, uh, work meetings and events, and just casual get-togethers with our friends. So it's easy to see why this year's STEM Educator of the Year Award is being led by the Council's SC Tech and Cyber SEC SC initiative, lots of SC going on in there, great things in South Carolina. So at the South Carolina Council on Competitiveness, the ability to meet industries, education and workforce development needs is an evergreen issue for the long-term economic health and ongoing success of our state. In the last decade, as you've heard earlier, demand for STEM jobs has grown exponentially. We actually saw that very clearly in our data that we released late last year where we did economic impact studies across our aerospace, logistics, technology, and cybersecurity cluster programs. But we also see it every single day and talking to companies as they rely more and more on developing efficiencies that attach heavily to STEM studies. We see it in emerging industries and in our powerhouse economic sectors like advanced manufacturing that also rely on STEM skills in their everyday operations. As we nurture and encourage that growth and prepare today's children for tomorrow's jobs, we will need more teachers. We will need to widen and deepen the STEM talent pipeline to tackle complex technical problems on the job while also targeting those life and core skills needed for our students to be ready for college, career, and citizenship. And that is why the STEM Educator of the Year Award is so important. Not only are we highlighting the accomplishments of our best and brightest teachers, we are also shining a light on the, the role that STEM education plays in the overall competitiveness of our state. We know this year has been anything but typical, and this year's finalists are similarly extraordinary. Our entire council team has been absolutely inspired by their resilience, their resourcefulness, and innovation in the face of learning disruptions that made hands-on learning a challenge to say the least. So to all five finalists, Amy Baldwin, sixth to eighth grade gateway to technology teacher, Oak Brook Middle School, Dorchester District 2, and Ladson. Dr. Nicole Yemethy, Project Lead the Way Gateway Teacher, R.H. Geddes Middle School, Pickens County School District, and Easley. Elizabeth Martin, 7th and 8th grade Science and Math Teacher, Sanders Middle School, Lawrence County School District 55 in Lawrence. Susan Matthews, Science Teacher, Richland Northeast High School, Richland School District 2 in Columbia, and Whitney Camacho, fourth grade teacher, McCall Elementary Middle School, Marlboro School District 1 in McCall. You are all making a significant difference in the lives of your students, your communities, and our great state by providing excellent curriculum, encouraging lifelong learning, and inspiring a passion for STEM beyond the classroom and into the future. I'm excited to announce that each finalist will receive a thousand dollar cash prize as a token of our appreciation for all you do for your schools, your students, your district, and our state. Congratulations to each of you. And many thanks to Bojangles for helping us to sponsor these awards. Um, and to Comporium Communications, you'll hear soon. We ask each applicant to share with their judges their own personal STEM platform, how they would like to highlight STEM education over the next year. Now we'll ask each of you to introduce yourselves and share briefly your own STEM platform. And we're gonna start with Whitney Camacho. Hi, I'm Whitney Camacho. I teach fourth grade at McCall Elementary Middle School 
This is my ninth year of teaching. My platform is to help schools create STEM studios. That's going to be a place where they can organize their materials. Teachers can sign up for slots to use the STEM lab. They can store projects, so it's keeping them out of their personal classroom, and it's saving schools money by having one set location for all those supplies. Thank you. Thank you, Whitney. And I think the school bell is ringing. <laughs> Next, we'll hear from Amy Baldwin. Hello, I am Amy Baldwin, and I'm from Oak Brook Middle School in Latson, South Carolina. This is my 21st year teaching, and I will definitely say it has been a wild ride. Um, I, when I found out I was nominated for this award by another teacher in the state, it shocked me. That meant, despite the pandemic, that people were seeing that I work hard to promote STEM education. Um, it's been a privilege to represent my school that I've been at home to since I was a sixth grader, as well as my district in the low country where I grew up in. Um, my platform would be called Changing the Face of STEM, and it actually picked up the momentum from this year's movement. For many years, students thought they have to fit in a box to be in a STEM field, and I want to work hard to break that box, like I've worked hard to break that box at my school. I want to help students realize no matter their gender, their background, STEM careers are for everyone. I would work with business and industry leaders to promote the vast backgrounds of our employees. We can showcase stories about employees who have used their knowledge in STEM to break out of that box and find their passion in their field. Together, we can help students see themselves in STEM careers across the state of South Carolina. The goal of changing faces in STEM is to help all students see their possibilities in their future. And if the students can see it, they can believe it, then they can achieve it. And that is how we help STEM across the state of South Carolina. I know my students listening in the school right now are probably wondering what wild idea I have next, but I'd like to share those wild ideas across the state of South Carolina. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. And now we will hear from Susan Matthews. Good morning. I'm Susan Matthews and I teach physics in Richland Northeast High School, Columbia. I'm honored to be the finalist of our district and this Midlands. If I'm selected as the STEM teacher of the year, my platform would be to create and support STEM embedded program from the elementary all the way to high school. Working in partnership with the district curriculum, we would create and make project-based modules that will be continuously implemented from elementary to the high school. These modules will be intended to make connections from science, big ideas, the elementary school, uh, from the elementary school to the physics and chemistry and biology exper experiments that they are learning in uh, high school. For example, we will start building modeling in elementary section. We will graduate to trials and experiments, and that will lead them to understand higher level physics uh, of rockets. Today, I'm going to share with you two of my top reasons why I'm so passionate to promote STEM embedded curriculum in my school. Both these reasons are connected to the student growth one in the global level and one in the individual level. First of all, it would encourage students to be more uh, interested in taking more science and advanced maths in high school, which will lead them to pursue STEM careers such as data analysts, such as data scientists, engineers, biomedical researchers, which will make them uh, globally competent all over the world. Secondly, this will by embedding STEM-based uh, STEM, uh, curriculum, our, we are preparing our school, our students in a highly, motive, in a highly engaged environment where they will develop world-class skills such as creative and critical thinking, collaboration and teamwork, leadership, and 
interpersonal skills. In addition, these students are going to learn to be thinkers, open-minders, and inquirers, which will prepare them to face and solve the many challenges that they may face in future. As a result, STEM embedded education will allow our students to grow in both global level and individual level. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. And now we will hear from Elizabeth Martin. Hey, good morning, guys. I just want to say as a representative of Lawrence District 55 that I am so appreciative of being here today. I also want to thank my administrator, Mr. J.R. Reed, for his support and encouragement throughout this year. I also want to thank each and every one of my students here at Sanders Middle School. It is an honor and a privilege to be here. My platform is twofold. One, I want to continue to break the barriers of STEM education, not only with the gender inequality, but racial inequality. I think our students and our community needs to see STEM leaders that mirror themselves. Uh, we saw this when Kamala Harris was voted vice president. You saw little girls wearing t-shirts that say, I see myself in our vice president. I want to see the same only, uh, also in our education system. I spoke with an educator just this morning who said they had a student that was just so ecstatic about having a male African-American teacher. That student had never had a male African-American teacher in their lives. And it was important for them to see themselves in that teacher. And it's important that we as students see ourselves in these STEM roles. And I would love the opportunity to continue that platform. Thank you very much. Tell them they're muted. You're, you're unmuted. Good morning from Getty Middle School in Easley, South Carolina. I'm Dr. Nicole Yemethy, and I represent Getty's Middle School, Pickens County, and the Upper Western District. This is my 15th year in teaching, and I believe that STEM can happen anywhere. Whether you're face to face in the courtyard or you are outside at home virtually, STEM is possible. With planning, creativity, and prep and take home kits, STEM can happen. Even a global pandemic doesn't stop Gettys from doing STEM through learning. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole, and thank you to all of our finalists. Um, listening to all of this exciting stuff actually makes me almost want to be back in high school these days. So uh, thank you again. I will now turn it back over to Stephanie and to our friends at Comporium Communications with our deepest gratitude uh, to announce this year's STEM Educator of the Year Award. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Shannon. As she said, we are going to announce the winner for this year's STEM Educator of the Year. And here to do that is Mr. Sean Barnes. Sean is a 2004 graduate of Clemson University and has worked for Comporium, where he is Vice President of Corporate Communications since 2006. A South Carolina native, Sean has been a resident of York County since 2013. Sean focuses his personal time on serving the community through his church, by volunteering with Comporium's Pioneer Club, and by serving on the boards of Habitat for the York School District 1 Education Foundation. He also serves on the Humanity of York County, the York, the York County Regional Chamber of Commerce, the York County Community Foundation, and the York County Free Clinic. So here to announce our winner, Mr. Barnes. Thank you and good morning. 
Uh, before I start, I just wanted to say uh, a big congratulations to all of our finalists, and I also wanted to say thank you to each and every educator in this great state. I know the last year has been a, a whirlwind, and the perseverance and the commitment and the adaptability that each of you have shown has just been amazing. So thank you um, for myself and on behalf of everyone at Comporium. If you're not familiar with Comporium, we're a 126-year-old telecommunications company. We're headquartered in Rock Hill, South Carolina. We serve about 10 counties here in South Carolina, three in North Carolina, and we make sure that about 135,000 people can connect to the world around them. So it's one of the reasons that we are so supportive of this particular award, but education as a whole. We find that uh, as a company with 1,000 people, about two thirds of them require some sort of uh, STEM education, whether they're providing video to our customers, whether they're worried about breaking the next speeds on broadband, or if they're looking to make a better home automation solution, uh, technology and engineering in particular are areas that we need a lot of uh, good qualified employees. So I have in my hands the, uh, the winner. Okay. All right, so like I said, in my hands is the envelope which contains the name of the winner of this year's STEM Educator of the Year Award. And so I will go ahead and open that. And it is my great honor and pleasure to announce that this year's winner is Amy Baldwin, Oak Brook Middle School, Dorchester District 2. Congratulations. My faculty is going wild on the outside of my classroom right now. <laughs> um, okay, give me just a second to get my composure. Um, I want to start by thanking, obviously, my amazing faculty. Um, they are surrounding me in classrooms so that I could speak without my mask on. I want to thank my husband, Carter, who is, has figured out how to watch on Facebook Live, and my son, Ethan, who have supported me. Um, my OMS family, my related arts team are amazing. My district, which has been my home for my entire life. My girl powered team, go girls, we got this. Our robotics team, Eagle Mind Squad, past and present, because I know you're always with me. I'd like to say, thank uh, my amazing administrators, Danielle Tofina and Mr. Legree, Allegree, who support and run with all my insane ideas that are already coming through my head now. I want to tell people all the time that um, there's so many amazing jobs that exist. And if I had known about them, I might have chosen a different path. But the truth is, I have my path. I get to do my passion every day, which is help my students find their passion for STEM and help them find jobs in this state that I love. Um, I can't wait to work with community leaders across the state. And Tracy, I can't work with, wait to work with you again to promote these jobs in South Carolina. And I am so happy and pleased. I'm sorry to present South Carolina. Um, thank you guys all so very much. I'm going to throw my mask on because I have a feeling my door is about to get bombarded. <laughs> thank you. <Questions> again. Yep. <laughs> So let's review. Today, we've heard dozens of stories of success in STEM education. But there are thousands more, all reasons to support the governor's proclamation of today as STEM Education Day. But let's not leave it as today. Let's have STEM Education Day be every single day. I'd like to thank all of our sponsors and supporters whose names you see on your screen. I'd like to thank everyone who's joined us today in person. 
And I'd like to thank every educator and every member of our community who continues to support safe protocols in this time of pandemic so that next year we can all gather together in person without masks and give those hugs and high fives that we've been missing so desperately. Thank you again for being with us today, <laughs> live or virtually. We look forward to seeing you and hearing more success stories in the days and months ahead.